How's it going everyone? This is Snoo from 603 Bass, and today's video is going to be a little bit different than normal for a couple of reasons, but chiefs among them, I somehow managed to lose half of the footage from this day, which is actually really depressing because I only caught three fish for the trip, and in that footage I lost, one of those fish is gone. And to add insult to injury, apparently my lavalier mic died, something I was not aware of until, uh, you know, after the end of the day when I was all done fishing, and I went to review all the footage and realized, hey, there's no audio, it is dead. But, no big deal, I'm just gonna handle things a little bit differently, and with this video, I'm gonna go at it from a much more technical aspect. Kinda go over why I chose certain areas, where I ended up there, and specifically why I chose certain baits. So I recorded this video back in the middle of November. I was very fortunate I was able to get out on one of the last really nice, beautiful weather days before the snow hit. Beautiful day. I was the only boat on this lake. I was up on Squam Lake, which is in the lakes region of New Hampshire. It's up near Holders, New Hampshire. It's pretty much smack dab in the middle of the state. Pretty big lake. I believe it is the second biggest lake in the state, a little over 5,000 acres. And I will typically spend the latter part of the year, as we get really close to winter, up north. All the lakes I fish down in southern New Hampshire are you know, typically in like around 50 acres in size, so they cool off a lot faster. The water gets colder a lot faster, the fish slow way down. So I'll go up north and fish the bigger lakes because they take out a lot longer to cool down and even ultimately freeze over. So again, I'm on Squam Lake, and first order of business, I'm going to kind of pound around some spots that I know of, which actually ended up turning up empty. Now, I know I wanted to target deeper water because the water at this point was about 42 degrees, which is really, really cold. And I know uh, the smallmouth, which is what I was specifically targeting, we're going to start moving out deeper. So I figured I will try a couple of spots I know of that has a good structure, which is mainly just steep banks that bottom out right at about 25 feet deep with scattered big boulders anywhere in the area. That's what I typically like to target. Use that as my starting point because I know those areas and I'm comfortable with it. See what I can find, whether I catch something or whether I mark something on my you know depth finders and take it from there. First few spots I went to showed up with nothing. Uh, no fish to be found in 20 to 25 feet of water. So at that point it got me thinking, okay, we probably need to start looking deeper. And not too far from a spot that I frequent pretty often, I was looking at my depth finder, I zoomed out, kind of started looking around the lake, and I happened to see a spot, it was a big hump. I would say it was about uh, 200 feet long by maybe 75 feet wide, best guess. Nice big oval shaped hump. It was about 50 feet deep all the way around the outside edges, but it came up to about 30 to 35 feet deep. It was kind of irregularly shaped, it wasn't very even. And that to me, you know what, I figured if they're not in like that 20 to 25 foot range, uh, I don't like fishing out in suspending water. I like to actually have hard contact on the bottom or fishing something that the fish should be close to the bottom. That was going to be my best guess. So that put me all the way up on the northeastern end of the lake, fairly close to Sandwich Bay in this kind of no man's land area between Kent Island and Four Point. That's where that hump was. Never fished it before, never even thought to look about it because I have uh, lots of productive spots kind of around that area. But it looked like it should work, everything kind of added up for conditions, so that's where I headed. And that's where I got my first fish of the day. I caught this fish on pretty much what I always catch my fish on this time of the year. A 3 8 ounce uh, football head jig with a 4 inch long uh, twin tailed hula grub and I was using the smoke gray with the purple and black flake. That color combo just seems to do exceptionally well up in the lakes region with that really, really clear water. If that doesn't work, then I'll go to something like a brown, and if, if that also fails, then I'll go to the, the standard green pumpkin that seems to work pretty much everywhere, but I find it, it's not quite as effective up here. Uh, maybe it's because I just have such good luck with that smoke and black and purple that I haven't given the green much of a chance, but Stick with what works and it, it provides pretty good results. So there's nothing fancy with how I was fishing it. I was casting out as far as I could, let it hit the bottom, and wait several seconds. And then I wouldn't do much with it. I'd try to keep it as low to the ground as possible. And I would only try to move it, you know, one to two feet at a time at the max. And I'd just kind of twitch the rod. I would never actually pick it up and one steady, constant movement of pulling the rod back and therefore dragging the jig along the bottom. I wanted it to keep kind of hopping so it makes it, it a little bit easier for the fish to see it as it's moving along now on this specific rod setup that I have when I'm using a football head jig I use 12 pound 12 pound fluorocarbon and while that is pretty good it has low stretch uh, it's still not as good as something say like braid which has zero stretch so when you're that deep I, I really can't feel the bite so it's just a matter of waiting until it feels a little heavy and spongy 
as I'm going up to pull in, you know, any of the slack and put a little tension on the line. And that's exactly what this fish was. It didn't feel the bite, I just felt a little resistance, and the line felt spongy, set the hook. And there's the first fish of the day, which actually happened to be my biggest fish of the day. I put it a little over three pounds. So armed with this new knowledge and the success of trying this new point, I decided to go try another spot in the middle of the lake that I was aware of, I had just never taken the opportunity to fish. And now this is a little northeast of Loon Islands, this is where I caught my second fish of the day. Doing the same thing, this hump comes up a lot higher, and there's actually some buoy markers around it to mark, you know, hazardous area where you should not go over with a boat because you're likely going to bounce your motor off of a boulder that comes up within a foot of the surface. But there are some points that come out really, really far, they're very, very gradual, and at the bottom of them where they kind of bottom out for a little bit before they drop off a shelf, it's about that 30, 35 foot range. So I worked this area a little bit on the northeastern side of this hump as you can kind of see those lighter tannish areas in the middle of the lake. And I did pick up another one about two pounds off that, again, northeastern point. Doing the same thing, slow dragging, slow hopping that football head jig with the spider grub, but going very, very slow. Now, unfortunately, this is the part where I don't have any footage of this, but I just wanted to kind of reiterate that point that, you know, I found something that worked and I tried to replicate that you know the same conditions in a different spot and it did work so at this point I was feeling pretty good even though the water is really cold and typically I struggle at this time of the year with the water being below 45 but you know now I'm on two fish in the same area so with that I was running out of time as late in the day so I figured I'd try one more spot that's a little bit different but you know kind of similar in that it was a, a higher point or a shallower point surrounded by deep water so with that, it brought me back down south in kind of this no man's land area in between Perch Island uh, over to the west and then Mooney Island and Bowman Island off to my east. Somewhere about in the middle here, you can't see it, but there is a hump there. And all around that, it's very deep. It actually gets down to about 60 feet, uh, especially mm, closer to Perch Island. So on the east side of this hump that I'm fishing. And, unbeknownst to me, even though I knew that this hump existed, again, I'd never fished it, I did not know there is a ton of grass on here. So that's actually really good, because now that's uh, knowledge I have that I've armored myself with that I can use next year. So again, that football head jig had been working for me. I did try a suspending jerk bait. I loathe the thing. I'm doing the best that I can to, you know, really get myself acclimated to fishing it, get used to it, and have the patience, but I still have limited patience for it. I, I did try it for a little bit, realizing that I was fishing some grass where it actually topped out only about 15 feet down and didn't have much luck. So I went back to the football head jig and I started kind of working the edge of the grass. So the, the grass kind of at the bottom of it was at about 20 feet, but again, that steep bank came down from about that 20-ish foot mark where the grass kind of ended uh, down to about 30 feet. So again, just working that, and I felt actually that my rate of success might be a little bit higher here, given that you know there was grass available and there was a ton of it. So I figured there might be some more bait kicking around. But as I, I kind of went around, I didn't actually mark any bait. So I had high hopes, but it, it did not pan out. But regardless, working again, that 30 foot point seemed to be the ticket. And I did pick up another fish. It was kind of small, but hey, you know what? This time of year, I'm just happy to be catching multiple fish, especially on a lake that even though it's one of my favorite bodies of water to fish, I still don't know enough about it to go up there and feel, you know, completely confident that regardless of the conditions, I can catch a fish. I'm not quite there yet, but I'm getting close. So after I got home at the end of the day and I finally had a chance to sit down, relax, and reflect on what I did for the day, what I didn't like, what I did like, what I felt I did right or wrong, I realized that what I probably could have done to make this day better was downsize the football jig setup that I was using. Pretty much everything I have is either a 4 or 5 inch twin tail hula grub, and the smallest football head jig that I have is 3 8 ounce. Now I have read from many an article and I've heard from many a person that when you get into really cold water like this, a jig will work but you really get a downsize and it's one of the things I really haven't done because I can still produce results with you know my 3 8 ounce jig and my 4 inch twin tailed hula grub but that's not the attitude I should be taking. I should be more proactive in trying something new and you know going with something different but is still within you know the same uh, profile of something that I'm very comfortable with and does produce results. So given the conditions where I know I struggle very much when the water is really close to 40 degrees and certainly below that, and in a lake that you know, while I am confident on it, I'm not 100% confident on it, I'm still very happy with the results that I had for the day. You know, three fish up there and just being up there alone in such beautiful weather, it was definitely a good day. 
It could have gone better though had I really kind of opened my mind up and decided, you know what, we should try something different, you know, that's still what you're comfortable with, fishing a jig, but change it up a little bit, downsize, let's see if we can differ the presentation a little bit and see if that doesn't produce better results. But you know what, that's the other part of fishing that I absolutely love is thinking about what I could have done differently, even if it was a good day, to potentially produce much better results for myself. And that's something I can take and you know, learn, process, and put it in my back pocket and remember it for the next time I'm out in those same conditions. But that's going to wrap it up. Thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate it. I've got a couple more fishing videos left uh, from footage I have with Thor from 2016. And then beyond that, I have some videos planned revolving around tackle and gear, such as you know, fishing poles and uh, rods and reels, how you can set them up differently, my personal setup, the whole shebang. Thank you guys again. I'll catch you in the next video.